I'm moving back stuff back and forth from the camper into the house as I'm working on stuff. So it's been a little bit hectic, but everything's good. I'm glad you're doing good. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Wilma. I'm glad you're good. Hi, Rex. Good to see ya. How have you been? I am stuffing some sugar into my face to give me the boost for this hour or two, two hours that we're going to spend together. <clears throat> we're going to work on adding some detail, a little more detail in the center. We're going to talk top dots, do some more top dots. I'm going to do some detail in between these petals. So this is a lot of adding detail today. Stupid busy of subbing for two teachers now. The paycheck should be awesome though. Well, that's good. That's a good positive. You must be so tired though, love. Hi, Chan. I hope everybody's doing good. So I'm going to talk with my mouth full. Try and get this cleared off of hair. Make my life easier a little bit. Trying to get all the dust off. My lighting is a little bit different today, so hopefully you guys can still see okay. If you do have any issues, please let me know. So we're going to add some more detail. Woke up early this morning, so I finished both mugs. Nice! That's awesome. Are you happy with how they turned out, Sharon? We had a mug painting party last night. It was me and Sharon and Jan that got to hang out. It was lovely. I'm going to be doing some switching though. My, um, my recording didn't work last night. It recorded. It said it had microphone on. It did not record sound. So, yeah. I was really happy. <laughs> Sense the sarcasm. The sarcasm is strong today. It's been a day, to be honest with you. We had a lot of rain last night. I woke up this morning to... I don't want to say flooding because I didn't have a ton of water built up but there was water everywhere. So I have learned to double check my windows because apparently the rain was coming in sideways and had some leakage from where some water pooled on the top. I'm assuming because the awning was not rolled in properly. So I spent this morning cleaning up water, soaking up water wiping down everything. I had painted three mugs yesterday afternoon and they all got water on them and all of the paint slid off. So I am incredibly proud of myself for not freaking out. It is what it is. I'm learning. But damn. I feel like I'm being tested. <laughs> James, you want to try again? The mug painting? I'd love to see. I'd love to come hang out. They're fun. We're having a really good time with them. And one of these days, I'm going to actually start advertising them like a business should. Yeah. It, it wasn't a fun way to start my day, I'm going to be honest. Really good thing is it was, it sounded so wonderful in the camper with the rain last night. It was, I fell asleep and I slept like the dead. It was a great night's sleep. I slept in this morning. And so that was nice. But then of course that reduced the amount of time I had to do uh, the things I needed to do this morning. But it is what it is and, we're, and everything's okay. And, that, and I get to sit and paint with you guys now. It's um, it's going to be really good to sit and paint with you guys and kind of 
kind of get into the zone and kind of let go of the stuff that is done that I can't control. I'm trying to hold to the fact that this is an opportunity for me to learn. So I am going to try and learn um, without with as few hissy fits as possible. Can't guarantee there won't be any, but we're gonna deal with it, right? The first try for you is bad. And that's and it's it's a hard thing to to get used to, you know, with the with the first couple of mugs I did, I struggled. Once you get used to them, because it behaves so differently than painting on stone or canvas or wood. Um, it definitely takes a lot of getting used to. And you know what? Be really, um, really honest with yourself. If it's not something that you enjoy, then then don't force yourself, right? However, if you want to, and that's why I love what you said, Janice, that you want to try again. As long as you want to, then that's that's the way to go. Rex has been struggling with a few things, but trying to push through going to work on a dot art today without expectations. Yes, Rex, letting go of expectations. That is definitely critical, right? <clears throat> it is definitely critical. Finn, stop, you're fine. The polar bear's barking outside. So, all right, so let's get into this piece. So this is where we're at so far. Let me set it, sit it up so we can take a look at it this way. Okay, so. The struggle from last week was there was not enough ooh, 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 not enough space to do full let me get my pointer like a teacher um there is not enough space to do the same number of rows in these petals so i did one row i'm going to eventually go back in and i'm going to add a couple other things to try and get this up as as level as i can with this because i'd like them to be even all the way around However, I'm going to work with it, but for now, um, we put in some detail in here. Um, I'm going to put more detail in here. We're going to do some more top dots, and I'm going to put some detail here at the end of these swoops and these kind of darker spots here, just a little bit, and a little bit in here too. Um, and then we're going to keep going with the top dots, and we're going to put some detail in here in these spaces, probably some swoops and a couple little dots, and then... Um, add a little bit in here as well and maybe something out here. So we might even get to the point where all of these little white tiny detail dots get added out here to this row, uh, but that's where we're gonna start. We're gonna start right in the center and start to work our way out. Um, I'm still, I've got some cracking in the center dot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm still gonna fix that eventually, but I'm gonna wait until most of everything else is done. Actually, no, while it's nice and dry, we could do that today. I'm going to sand this down a little bit. So let me see if I can find my sandpaper. I can't find my sandpaper, but there's my sanding block. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to sand that down a little bit. Oh, stop. And then start to do the top dots that'll go in the center as well. So lots of little tiny detail that we're going to do today, filling in those spaces adding the white dots around that ring as well. So I'm not sure how far we're gonna get today, but we're gonna start plugging away. And this is this is one of my favorite parts. Once I get the base uh, design down, going in and adding these little bits of detail that really, really pop. I love being able to set back like this and just take a really good look at it. So, sorry, is that better? Can you hear me better now? Sorry, Jan. Thank you for letting me know. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Anna. All right, hopefully that's better. So we're gonna lay this down. I just got my sanding block on the ground. And kind of coming to terms with the fact that today is going to be a day of knocking stuff down and picking it up, all of that good stuff. I am going to do Christmas ornaments. We could do Christmas ornament painting parties. I'm going to have to start those soon, actually, because I want to have all of my inventory ready to go for, say, September. So um, those might start soon, um, at least some of the ones that I'm going to do. 
Yeah, I know. I need, And I need to get one, Sharon, too. I need to get one of those connectors so that I can keep my phone plugged into power and attach a microphone, or I'll get a Bluetooth microphone. That might help. Um, so I'm just using a sanding block I got at Dollarama. They come... Um, they come uh, in a package of three or four different grits, so I'm just choosing a fine one. Walking Dead scene over here. No, this is, if, if this is what you were talking about, this is a scene from the Deathly Hollows from Harry Potter. I am a Potter head. Big time. I was completely traumatized by The Walking Dead. Um, the episodes when Negan first came in completely traumatized me. I've never been so physically affected by a show in my entire life. But it's good. I need to get back to it because I haven't watched it in a while. And I haven't caught up. And same with Fear the Walking Dead. I'd like to do that too. So I'm just using a really, really fine sanding block here. I'm not worried if it kind of does anything to the dots next to it because... I can always go in and fix that. So I'm just going to kind of go in these little circles, get as much of this off as I can. And I'll go in and touch it up. So I'm looking, there's a crack in here. You can see the crack there. So that's what I'm trying to get rid of. I might actually go in with, let me see. I wonder if I do have actual sandpaper. I thought I did. Let me see if I can find it. If I can, then I will use it instead. I feel like it's in a drawer here somewhere. It's just a matter of which one. Mm. No, I'm not going to find it easy. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to use my sanding block. I'm going to just grab a coarser one. Is Christy here? We use Bluetooth mics for lives. They sit around your necks. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Jerilyn. I'll totally look at it. I need to go to Orlando. Hi, Cindy. I did. I got to go there once, Janice. I was down in Orlando for a work trip. And I was lucky enough to be able to book some extra time off. Um, and I remember showing up at Universal and seeing Hogwarts off in the distance. I spent probably nine hours there. It was probably one of the best days of my life. I didn't use a map. I just let myself happen upon Hogsmeade. And when I turned the corner out of the Jurassic Park area, I saw it and I burst into tears. <laughs> completely burst into tears. I was so happy. And it was and it was cool because I I met some really cool people. Um I got to talk to people who were into a lot of the same stuff as me. It was like I found a home. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I should totally move to Orlando and just work here. That would be a great job. <laughs> All right, let's keep wiping this off. So I am going to have a couple little touch-ups to do, but the crack is definitely getting better. How you doing, Christy? I hope you guys are doing well. So we're still working on this large piece. I'm just trying to get the center dot, and I know this is shaking the camera, and I'm really sorry because it's shaking the table. Um, I'm, I had some cracking in the center dot, so that's why I'm sanding this down. It is impacting some of the side dots, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of repair there, but... It is what it is. This can happen a lot of the times if you use too much paint on your center dot, especially if you're intending to do uh, a bunch of top dots. Try and make your center dot as thin as possible. Okay, I don't wanna wipe this down too much more because I wanna fix this here. So, let me grab my cloth. See if I can dry it a little bit, my dry cloth. And then to make life as easy as possible for myself, I'm going to grab a small brush and I'm actually gonna just paint over that background that's smudged so that I can cover that up. 
In my mind, it's worth it because I know it's a headache to do something like this, but in my mind, it's worth it because I don't, I really, really, really don't want that cracking on um, my center dot because I really want it to be a focal point. And, and sometimes when the base gets cracked, it will translate to subsequent, um, subsequent top dots if you're adding more and more top dots. So actually, I'm just going to paint right over this. And I'll just redo a couple of these once this dries. I really, really, so the ways to get away around the cracking, number one is keep your dots thinner. The cracking happens when the edge of the dot dry faster than the center. <clears throat> so the only other way other than making your dots thinner and not using a huge ton of paint I know we like to have the bumpiness on them, but uh, this would be a time when you would want to kind of stay away from that. And remember that the layers and layers of top dots that you might be putting on there, or that, which is my intention here, will add some of that layered and bumpy feel to it. So, um, that's one way to reduce the risk of cracking. And the other way, is um, using higher quality paints. You know, if you're using some of the heavier bodied paints, mixing them with a uh, pouring medium, that should give you um, a significant decrease in risking of the paint cracking. But as you can see, I was able to cover it. I'm gonna be able to go back in and, and do those top dots. Um, I don't know if you can see here where there's little dots like this. Eventually, I will, once this whole thing is done, I'm going to go over with a teeny tiny uh, paintbrush and get rid of any little dots that are still down here. Finn, you're fine, bud. And then, so there's all kinds of little spots that I'll go in and, and fix up at the very, very end once everything's done, my final touch up, right? Because things get chalky and that sort of stuff happens. So... Um, what I'm going to do then, let's see here. I am going to start on, oops, my brush was wet. I'm going to start on this row here and adding some top dots in detail. Once this is dry, I'll come back in and start fixing that up. So I'm going to start on this one and add a little bit of top dots on there. And how I remember what colors I've already used is I look at, this is my lightest purple, this is my second lightest purple, and this is my third lightest. So I numbered my paints going from light to dark. So this is number one, this is number two, and this is number three. So what I did was is I had a number three dot, and then I put a number two on top of it, and now I'm going to put a number one on top of that as well. Hi, Chris. I hope they're going well. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. We're doing good. Making progress on this one. Making some progress. Um, now, one thing I ran into last time is that there wasn't enough of a difference between some of the paints, so I am going to have to probably mix some, uh, some custom stuff here just for these top dots to give it that dimension. Um, but we should be pretty much good to go with this guy. So let me grab my tool. How are the classes going, Chris? Are they going well? Are you doing good? As in, are you happy? Are you pleased with how well they're going? I hope everything's going good. I'm just gonna actually add a little bit of white to this one, just to lighten it up a little bit. Just a skosh instead of mixing it on a palette. Just enough. When you pre-mix colors for a large piece, you wanna make sure you've got enough of each color mixed, but also have a palette handy just in case you might have to add in some other dimension in there. Best day so far, we graduate the fostering classes on Tuesday. That's amazing. That is so cool. I'm so happy for you. So here we go. So you'll see that there's not a huge difference between the dot 
and the paint that I'm putting down. I will probably go back in after and add some white for the final top dot. But sometimes, especially when you're taking breaks from a piece, this is what the trouble that I get into is once these dry, I might not notice any difference at all between the first top dot and this one. So I might have to go back in and add some more white and create a lighter purple because I feel like this one's probably going to dry the same color, or pretty darn close to the same color as the layer before. But we're going to give it a shot and see how it goes. Thank you. It's coming along. It's definitely coming along. I'm, I'm remembering that it is much more difficult to continue with a large piece, doing just little bits week by week. Not so much with the design, sometimes with getting into the flow of it, but really in remembering colors and mixing and all of that sort of stuff, I realized that, <coughs> excuse me, I didn't really, I probably should have mixed the other colors into um, little paint pots and labeled them um, for the highlights and everything, but that's okay. All right, so what I wanna do now is I want to add something in these spaces here. Just something little, probably just one little tiny dot. So I think I'm actually gonna use this lightest one and just add a little dot here. Just to add a little bit of punch in that little space. Depending on how far down the swoops go, you might not need this. I like doing these on the end of a little bunch of swoops too. I think they look kind of cool. Almost like a little ribbon tying them off at the end. Hopefully you guys can see this okay. I'm gonna keep a, an eye on the camera to make sure I'm in view, but yell at me if I don't. I've enjoyed the process of this one though, being able to kind of put it together and try and seeing that, that end vision of how I want it to turn out. So it's definitely something I wanna do more of. And once that dries in there, then I'll be able to keep going. Um, so sometimes just adding a slight little dot with a little bit of different color can really fill a space enough um, without overwhelming the space. Cause I still want to use the black background to, to use that negative space. Um, but I don't want to overwhelm with it. So I've noticed it's the little teal. It really is. And it's the subtle details that when you're up super close to something, you, you don't always notice it or it feels like it's futile. <laughs> feels like you're making too much work of things sometimes. Um, but then when you step back and take a look at it from far back, it can really make a difference. So once we're done these ones here, this next little one, we will do that again. Well, we'll set it back and just take a quick look at it to just really see how it's, how it's coming along. So I'm going to use um, my third color now, and I'm gonna do a slightly larger dot, just another single dot, just in here in between these, just like I did down here. So kind of mirroring that same idea. Um, I don't know if a four is as big as I want to go. I think I want to go to a five or a six. I think I'm going to go for a six. I always find the top dots really, really gratifying. I'm still trying to decide, and maybe you guys can help me with this, if I'm going to do any detail on top of the swoops. Um... These really dark ones here, they don't show up that great from far behind. So I thought about maybe taking um, the next lightest color or one of the other lighter ones and doing some walking dots down the center. What do you think? Should we try it and see? The worst thing that's going to happen is it's not going to work and I have to redo that swoop, right? So we can always try it and see how it looks. So maybe we'll give that a shot after this row. Okay, and I'm gonna pull the camera back a little bit more so you can see a little bit better here. Yes, adventurous. Let's do it. 
All right, we'll give it a shot, right? Because the worst thing that's gonna happen is, and these large pieces are gonna challenge you to do a lot of trial and error. So really try and let go of needing to have it all figured out on the first go. Be o try and find a way to kind of be okay with just trying a bunch of different things to see how they work. Now this is gonna be a really subtle difference that's gonna go on here when I'm using color number four on top of color number five, but I think that it's gonna give a really nice effect. So let's give it a shot and see. Give us my paint a stir. It's still gonna be fairly dark and it might be one of those things that you only really see it when you look up close. Yes, I have seen the top swoops and I've done top swoops before and they're really, really fun. Really, really fun to do. So let's try one of each and let's see which one we like better. Let me try over here. I'll do a couple of each and then we can compare. I think I like the dots on this one. Top swoops are fun to play with for sure because they can really make things kind of stand out and almost look 3D. So let's see here. Let's take a step back. When I get to this stage, there's a lot of steps back to just take a look at it. <clears throat> Doesn't help that there's that big black blotch in the middle there, but let's have a quick look here. Let's see if I can turn this a bit to match my camera angle because I'm a little crooked. So we've got The swoops over there, and then we've got the dots over there. I think I like the dots. Yeah, we're gonna do the dots. So with those three, I'm gonna wait until that dries. I'll redo the dark swoop, and then I will add the little dots on top of that. And what I'll do to mirror the design, I am gonna go in with a lighter purple in here, minus the dog hair, and do some little top dots on the top of these middle ones as well. Yeah, I feel the same way. Like up close, I really like the swoops, but from far away, I think the dots add some some really cool dimension that you can see from a little bit further away from the piece. So let's just go with that. Let's see how it goes. So we're gonna keep going with the dots. And then, and it's gonna be very subtle too, right? Cause this paint is gonna dry um, and it's going to be a very, very subtle line of dots in there which is on the especially on the dark purple will be kind of nice because it'll give a little bit of punch to it so they won't fade into the black background quite as badly as as they do right now the swoops on the side really help because it does give that contrast to show that hey this isn't black in between these it's just a dark purple So many different things to try. So I will definitely do some looking around for a Bluetooth headset, my end microphone that I can use on these lives to make life a little easier. It would be nice to have some better sound, especially for the ones that I record and people want to watch back, right? I'm sure it would cancel out a lot of the background noise pretty well. All right. So it's slow progress, but it is progress, right? And those extra little dots in there, I think look really good. Oh, thanks, Jerry Lynn. Thanks, love. All right, so 
I am going to use, so that was color number four that I did that one with. So I'm going to go in with uh, color number three and do the same thing on the row before, just on the center swoops. Just right in here. And this one I can go all the way around. And then we'll start adding some detail in between here, in between these petals down here. Um, and then hopefully this will dry in a little bit here and we can come back to, um, we can come back to those and I'll do the repair there. On large pieces, I do tend to spend a significant amount of time doing repairs and switching things up. Sometimes what worked in my head doesn't work in real life. And sometimes what I think should work in real life doesn't work either. So there's a lot of trial and error. And you're going to find that with all of your pieces, whether you're doing a large piece or a small piece. You might decide you want to try something different, something new only to <clears throat> only to um be really unhappy with the look of it or 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 some or have it not turn out the way you wanted to right so it's really about trusting your trusting what you like what you don't like and knowing that every time something happens that you don't like you get clarity on what you do like Lunch break's over. I'll be back next Saturday, maybe Friday for mugs. Awesome, Chris. It was good seeing you. Please take care of yourself. Chrissy, for the record, I love the background noise when you do these live. I like hearing the birds and the dogs. Oh, I'm glad. I'm so glad you enjoy it. I'm excited for when I get uh, internet out in the in the camper because then I'm going to be right near the horses. And if I can get internet out there, I might be able to do a live sitting outside and maybe even do a live going out into the horses, which would be lovely to introduce everybody to all the critters. So for those of you who don't know, um, I bought a camper. So I am no longer living in the house here at the farm. I am living in a camper on the property. Um, we have spent the last, uh, we, me and Audrey, have spent the last three nights out in the camper. Um, don't have internet out there yet though, so I'm coming back into the house um, to do any of my lives, but for the most part, I am out in the camper full time. Um, I still have a bunch of stuff that I need to move out there. A bunch of, hopefully I'll be doing some purging and getting rid of some stuff that I don't need any longer. But um, yeah, it's pretty exciting. And eventually the plan is I'm gonna paint it and I am going to cover the entire camper in mandalas. Drawn mandalas, painting on walls, dot mandalas on everything. You like the dots? So this, let me zoom out. So now we have this. It's just that little subtle bit of difference. And again, that big black chunk in the middle, I'm not a super fan of. Um, But I'll, like I said, I'll be fixing that, right? So let's zoom in a little bit. And when you get in a little closer, you get to see that detail. And then those three swoops, my huge finger's gonna come in here. There we go, because I'm zoomed in. Those three will get fixed a little bit later. Yeah, I think they look really cool. I think that looks really, really neat. That's fun. All right. Thanks, Cindy. I'm excited. It is Rex. It's like my tiny house. And it's so funny because the stairs up into the bedroom, there's a couple stairs and they lift up and they have storage under the stairs. And that's the first thing I said. I'm like, there's storage under the stairs. This is my tiny house. This is just like a tiny house. I'm so excited. <laughs> but it's going well. Audrey, I'm not sure how she feels about it. She's been very, very needy um since we moved out there um she does not like being left out there alone with the door open if she can see me somewhere else um but we're we're getting there we'll we'll settle into it all yeah it's pretty fun thanks guys all right so 
Next is going to be, I'm gonna do some more top dots on top of these center dots in the middle of the petals. This is where you're really gonna to start to see it look like the center of these petals kind of start to glow. Thank you, Rex, I'm excited too. I'm excited too, I feel like I've, I've got some independence back, which is really, really fun. Really, really, really fun. I think it was the three, was it the three and the two that didn't have much difference? Yeah, we'll do it. Okay, so I'm using my number two color, so my second lightest purple. Let me just double check that I put the right lids back on. Yes, I did, okay. Um, I'm using my second lightest purple because these center dots I did with color number four, which is the second darkest. Then the first top dot was color number three. So now I'm doing the next top dot in color number two. And the goal is to do color number one on top of these and then white on top of color number one. And the white will be such a teeny, 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 tiny little dot but it's gonna make it look like it's glowing in the dark. So this really gradual move from the darker purple to the lighter purple is gonna give that 3D effect. I love doing these top dots. Hi, Nancy. Oh, nice. I hope you have a wonderful time with your granddaughter. I hope that it's a wonderful day. I'm so glad you're getting to do that. And thank you, I'm glad you like it. It's coming along, it's definitely coming along. I have a little bit in the middle I gotta fix up, but otherwise it's doing pretty darn good, I think. We're making progress. Definitely making progress. Let me keep turning this here. I know that this is a hard angle to see. Maybe I'll, let me see if I can zoom in a bit and get in there a little bit more so you can see the difference between the dots. So you see there, that one has the top dot on it right here. And then we put the top dot here and it gets just that tiny bit lighter. Just that tiny bit. Right, and that's super gradual. That's what we're gonna do in the center dot as well. Um, as it gets gradually lighter and lighter. No, Daisy. Nope, nope, nope. Daisy just jumped up. Sorry, one of the cats just jumped up. Come here. Nope. Come here. I love you, Daisy, but no. Sorry guys, had to kick one of the cats out because she was getting ready to jump on the table and walk across the painting. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're enjoying it, Renee. That's wonderful. So this really gradual, we're gonna do this in the center dot as well, and it's going to make a big difference in like I said, making these look like they're 3D. Now it's completely up to you. If you wanna to do top dots on these bands as well, you totally can. Um, but I find that sometimes when I do that, it almost is a little bit too much and it detracts from the 3D-ness of the center dots on these petals. So for now, I'm not going to, and what, what I will do is at the end, once I've got everything else done, it's gonna stand out a lot better to me to figure out whether that's something I wanna do going forward. Right, and I'm gonna use the same color on this next row. Um, I'm just gonna get a slightly larger tool. Remembering that your top dots, you want them to still leave enough of the rim of the other color to jump in there. Top dots not tapped out. <laughs> Gotta love when Siri tries to be helpful. <coughs> DZ. I know, but you have to get down. Thank you. She likes to break in. All right, so let's keep going here to do these top dots. I'm going to bring this out a little bit more. So you see how this one's kind of looking like it's glowing a little bit? 
Don't you dare, Daisy. Don't you dare. Come here. Come here. Come here, right now. Come here. Let's see if I can get her to sit on my lap. Stay right there. Right there. No, you're not going anywhere else. You're staying right there. We'll see how long this lasts before she tries to climb. The last time this happened, she stayed for a little while, but then she jumped up and wagged her tail and smudged half of a mug. So we will see how nervous I get with you, Daisy. I know you want love, but I'm busy. Yeah, make your biscuits. That's good. Daisy is the cutest little one because when she meows, she doesn't do it. She can do a full meow, but she doesn't. Most of the time, she just goes, meh. Right, Daisy? Can you meow? Nope. She's too into making her biscuits right now. You're a real space invader, though. Do you know that? I know when Audrey's glaring at us, she's not happy with this situation. Daisy, stop. Here we go. Keep turning and turning and turning. So remembering that I don't have the Lazy Susan underneath this because this does not have any cross the center supports. Some canvases you can get will have actual scent supports across the middle, but this is just the stretch canvas and the outer frame. <clears throat> so because I don't have those extra supports, I can't use my Lazy Susan because my Lazy Susan is actually smaller, um, significantly smaller than this canvas. But you can already kind of start to see it glowing a little bit and getting to that point where it looks like it's almost glowing. So while I'm spinning this around and I'm looking at this, I'm looking at the space above these dots right in here, and I think I'm gonna do some swoops in there. So then it's just a matter of picking what color swoops I wanna do. So I know that this one I ended with color number four, this one above it I ended with color number five. So in my head, I want to be as dark as I can because I wanna put some of those detailed top dots on there too. So I'm gonna go with color number three for those swoops. Probably number three and number two, actually. So I'm gonna go with number three and number two. Um, I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna do two colors, but I'm gonna grab them and have them ready just in case. Now, yes, Daisy, I love you too. A little space invader, aren't you? All right, so now I need to reach across from me. So I'm going to, I'm watching very carefully where I have to put my hand so that I don't put it in these top dots that I just finished. So I'm gonna start right around here and I'm gonna do a swoop right down the middle. I'm actually not gonna go all the way down. I'm just gonna go down to where they start to meet because there's a couple of them that are really close together. And I don't think I wanna have the swoop go all the way down in between and potentially go over top of those walking dots. So I'm gonna start right here. And just pull it down to about there. Okay, so I'm gonna go all the way around with this color and then I'm gonna pull back and I'm gonna see if I feel like it needs more. This might be enough to fill that little space and adding any more might feel like too much, but we're gonna a lot of do a couple little things and then step back. Perfect swoop, thank y'all. I'm very pleased with it myself. <laughs> very pleased. And I'm trying to remember to keep my hand 
in a spot where I am not going to put it on top of the wet top dots that I just laid down. Lay down, Daisy. Well, then lay down. I don't care if you stay here, but just lay down. Oh, I love you too. And go nice and slow for your swoops. Right, it's all about the speed. <clears throat> so let's keep going here. I'm coming very close to touching the top dots. So learn from my mistakes. If you have not already done the top dots on the second row of petals, <coughs> do them after you do your swoops so you don't have to go through as much stress trying not to touch the paint you just laid down. So in a perfect world, that's what I would have done, right? I would have done the top dots here, then I would have done my swoops, then I would have moved on to the top dots out here. But we all know that I don't like to do things the easy way. Oh, this is going to look nice. This is going to fill that space in really nicely. And I think it might be more than enough to fill the space. I'm not even thinking that there needs to be anything else. I originally was thinking I might want to add something on either side of these swoops, but I think that this swoop is going to be enough to really fill that space and, and give it give it a purpose, I guess you could say. And this is something you can always do at the beginning of your design too, right? <coughs> like in theory, I could have put these swoops in there right at the very beginning and then built the next row of petals off of these swoops. But going in and backfilling is never a bad thing. You guys are so cute. Thank you. So letting the paint pool a little bit, pulling it down just a tiny bit, and then going super, super slow to get that nice point. Speed is not your friend when it comes with swoops or really dot mandalas, right? If things are quote unquote messing up for you, if you're making mistakes, if you're not things, your strokes aren't turning out the way that you want them to, when in doubt, slow down. No matter how fast, how slow you think you're already going, slow down even more and see how that impacts it. Doesn't mean you'll have to go that slow all the time, but it will start to help create your method for these particular bits and pieces. Like that swoop that I just did, little funky. It might end up getting replaced. Daisy, I wouldn't do it. You're going to get smacked she's jumping up to try and eat audrey's food she's gonna smack you it's gonna be your own fault daisy all right so hopefully i'll get internet out there soon <coughs> and be able to start doing my lives from out in my new place because i definitely want to do lives when i am painting the whole thing Can maybe get you guys to help me. <coughs> help me pick colors. Help me pick locations for different things. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to set this up. And then we're going to take a quick look. And then the center should be ready to go. So those little swoops did exactly what I'd hope they would do, which is fill in that space and really make that negative space pop out. I'm really, really happy with that choice. So then um, we're going to do the same thing again down here. Maybe not the swoops, maybe walking dots. No, nah, we're going to do swoops. So I'm going to first go in and I'm going to fix this stuff. I'm going to put down a new um, center dot and touch that up. And I'm going to use very, very little paint to do so. And I'm going to use my darkest purple. So let's see. 26, 27, 28. What size did I use? 
I'm gonna use a 28. So I'm not gonna use a lot of paint at all, just barely covering the end of the, the dotting tool. And go just like that. So it's not a ton of paint. And then I'm going to use one of my dotting tools to actually move that paint around so it's not all piled up in the middle. This is another thing that you can do to help reduce the chance of getting the cracking because this is going to help smooth out that center dot so you don't have a huge glob of paint in the middle that is going to take significantly longer to dry than the rest of, of your design. So now I need my white because we're going to... <coughs> excuse me finish off the white am I gonna finish off the white no I'm gonna start actually with the lightest color I'm gonna work my way in uh, because it will actually help me with my spacing I think so I gotta check and see what size so I use my tools and I just check and see what size the previous dot was that looks like a five but I'm actually gonna try a four Air on the side of caution. You can always use a larger tool over top if you need to. But that looks like the right size. Oh, and I put my finger in some other paint. Boop. There we go. And then I'm going to work my way in. <clears throat> so now in the center. I'm gonna do the white and see here, I put my hand in these two dots. So I'll fix those after. They're gonna have top dots on them anyway. <coughs> right, it adds character. It makes you look at it, it makes you think and go, what? what was she thinking? What was she thinking with the black splotch? Makes you question everything. <laughs> I like making people question everything. Question what you know, what you think you know. There we go. So I'm using this row and the spaces between the dots to help me put these white dots down. That's what I'm using for my spacing there. I should do that one of these days. Make a whole mandala and then just put some random blotches of black paint on it and call the piece Question Everything and just see what happens with it. That could be fun. It could really mess with some people's heads, though. I'm actually going to go over some of these ones because they're not as round as I'd like them to be. So once they're good and dry, you can always dot over top of something and be able to camouflage it a little bit. And then I'll go in and do the little details in between, fill in those little missing dots. And then once these guys dry, you can go back in and do some more top dots around the center. I love doing top dots. I love, love, love them. I find the 3D kind of effect incredibly gratifying. <coughs> now there's a lot of people that play with a lot of different color when they do the top dots and you know, putting completely different colors on top of each other or doing white base dots and then put um, a completely different color on top of the white. That can work out really well, especially on a black background to help pull some color out. Um, but there's, it's really up to you, right? 
And again, it's a lot of trial and error. It would be the fun to see the comments, right? Just to, just to say, what do you think? And then just to see what people have to say. Not even give any kind of hints or anything. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> All right. So while that's drying, let's zoom back out. So now we need to do something in here. So because there's swoops up here, this is where I struggle. Because there's swoops up here, it makes me think I should do walking dots here because I don't want a swoop on top of a swoop. However, I'm not completely convinced of that. <coughs> but I think it could look really cool to have some walking dots coming right from the top of those. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that. We're gonna try it, and if I don't like it again, I can always take it off and do it all over again, right? If that's the worst thing that happens, I am okay with that. And you have to decide if you're okay with that. Not everybody is gonna be okay with that. You might say, whatever happens is what's staying there because I'm not doing this again. I've had those moments too where I'm like, doesn't even matter if it turns out how I like it. I'm just done and I need to move on. And that's totally okay. So let's try it and see. So I'm going with color number four because the center swoop is color number five, which is the darkest purple. So I'm going to start here and work all the way down to there. And then we'll take a step back after these are all on there and see how, that, how we feel about it. So I count a lot with these to see if I'm doing the same length. Five, six, seven, eight. <clears throat> that helps me know if I'm staying symmetrical or not. Like so. Ooh, oh, I, I know what I could do. I could do another thing. I could do another thing of these little white tiny dots on either side of this one, because that won't take up too much space, and I could even do it on here too. That could look cool. Oh, I don't know. Okay, we're just gonna keep going for now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <coughs> so sorry, you guys. Now, if you are a member of Patre of my Patreon, video number four for this large piece um, got flagged on YouTube, and it looked like they had allowed it to go through, which is why I posted the link on Patreon, only to find out that the video is still blocked. It said I had copyrighted um, stuff in my video, which means that it could hear my music in the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to edit it, cut it down a little bit, like any spots where it's just kind of sitting in and chatting and stuff, cut out any kind of little spots that are a bit of dead time. And I'm going to speed it up and make it a bit of a hyperlapse video. It's still going to be, <clears throat> it's still going to be slow enough that you can see what's going on but um, it's not going to be have any voiceover on it. Um, in theory, I could go in and I could do a voiceover on it, um, but to be brutally honest with you, the idea of sitting there for two hours and talking every little bit, um, it, it doesn't sound even the tiny bit fun. So <laughs> I'm honestly just not gonna do it. So we'll just have that little hyperspeed spot in the middle for video four. So um, I've had some technical issues, uh, like I mentioned with the um, the mug parties. I am gonna be working on these things over this coming week. <clears throat> Excuse me. But um, it will be coming. It's just gonna be a little bit behind. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna stand this up again. And we are going to take a peek. 
like so. So I think that those look good. I'm happy with those. Now, what I'm unsure of now is um, putting something in here. So I think I'm going to put a purple dot in here in each of them, just like I did up here in the center. So I'm going to do that here. And then we'll start on the white detail in between all of these guys. Okay, but I think that looks good. I'm, I'm happy with that. The swoops to the walking dots and walking dots to swoops makes me happy. I feel that looks good. So I think that little bit just in between these swoops is gonna make a, a nice difference. And then we'll go back in after I do all of this detail because of this stuff is wet, then I might add in those little white dots on either side of the swoops. <coughs> and maybe even in here a little bit too. We'll see once all the top dots and stuff are on. Uh, going in with white will probably be something that, in a lot of the cases anyway, I'll wait and do that after. Um, after I've gone through with all of my different top dots. So let's choose. I'm gonna go with color number four four and I'm going to choose a size what size dot do I want in there is a 10 big enough let's try it and see Sharon do it all right let's see I think that's a good size. Just enough, eh? Just enough to fill in a little bit of that space. So for my reference point for this, I'm looking at how far this dot is away from the top of the petal and more importantly, how far it is away from this row of uh, purple dots, the border. Because I want them to be about that same distance from that border <clears throat> whenever possible. Now, if you had other guidelines still in here, that would obviously help as well to help you keep them on a straight line. Um, but I don't, so we got to go with the eyeball and just see how that does. Gets doing all right so far and we'll do, so I'm gonna do a bunch of top dots on these ones too once they dry to give them that extra little bit of glow. <clears throat> oh my goodness, sorry guys. Um, but I think that's gonna look cool. And then I think with all of the white in the row, in the border, I think that's gonna just make a huge difference. Huge, huge, huge. But I like this. I find that sometimes I'll get to a point with a painting and I'll be like, meh, 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 it's all right. But then when I start adding in detail like this, <clears throat> I remember why why I'm loving it so much. And I always find I get ideas for the next piece. Right? Like, I really want to do a piece that is all swoops. Just all swoops. Every row is fans of swoops. I think that would be really cool. <clears throat> so let's set this up again. zoom out and there we go just enough stuff in there right to make that black work for us but to fill the space to make it look nice and complete and I think again once I get the white dots in there that's going to make a huge difference all right so now time to start working with the white so I'm going to go in with the white and my micro daughter my micro daughter tool there's a link for this in my bio if that is something there. Don't forget to remove the top swoops and make them dots. Yes, I will definitely have to do that in there. 
<coughs> excuse me. And then I'm gonna make sure that I do some dots in here as well. So why don't we do that right now? Sorry, I was showing you something that wasn't even there. So I'm gonna do um, some dots in the center swoop here too. So I'm gonna choose, keep my color number four out. And then we're gonna add some of these in there too. Thanks, Jan. I'm really excited over the next couple of days is when I'm really gonna get my art studio set up out there. Um, I gotta check for a couple of spots where there was some water and make sure I don't put anything in there um, that isn't in like a sealed tote or something. <clears throat> but I've got so much storage out there. Like I'm, it's almost to the point where I'm like, I've got all this stuff and I don't even know where to put it because I've got so many choices. So I'm, I'm looking forward to getting out there to kind of start moving some of this stuff around and see what I can figure out. I have a great big tarp. I think I might put it over the roof to see if that can help a little bit we're supposed to get some more rain over the next couple of days so we'll see how it goes still trying to win the lottery too because if I win the lottery I'm buying property and then I'm going to be able to host retreats and that would be the ultimate That would be so cool. Someday, someday it'll happen. I'll have a piece of land <clears throat> where you guys can come and visit and sit and paint and have a wonderful bit of peace and quiet and vacation. Have animals all over the place. It'll be fabulous. Once we can start doing all of that travel and stuff again. That would be so cool. Well, and that's the thing. I got to figure that out. That's why I'm thinking, you know, I'm not going to get that done today. So if I put the tarp over, at least help it a little bit. But, um, and then get up there once it's not pouring rain and see what's going on. I definitely have some investigating to do. Wouldn't that be cool, Jill? It'd be so fun. Oh hell yeah, we can do. I would. We'll do the. We'll do the bonfire and and remember when Sandra Bullock danced around the fire in uh, what was the the movie The Proposal with Ryan Reynolds when uh, Betty White made her dance around the fire and just to the window to the wall. <laughs> she was doing that song. Oh yeah, we'll do all of that stuff. We'll have yoga. We'll have meditation. We'll have painting. We'll have different ceremonies and we'll have all kinds of cool stuff. All right. Okay. So there's that. So now we're going to do the little white detail around these edges and definitely dancing. We definitely need, we definitely need dancing. Dancing is too good for the soul, way too good for the soul not to, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so let's get started here. This is one of my favorite tools. I find the paint just flows off it so nicely when I've got a nice thin paint to work with. So I'm gonna completely cheat with this too. I'm not gonna just do one row at a time. I'm gonna do all of it one section at a time.
Oh, sir, I got lost in that for a second. Sorry, you guys. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. This is the part that I find really satisfying when I can do big chunks of repetitive design because then I can eventually let my mind just start to go on automatic. And I find that so fun. All right, let's spin it. It's amazing how something so tiny can make such a big difference too, right? <clears throat> and it's not like it doesn't look good without it, but when you just add this little bit, it's kind of like, ooh, okay. I see what we're doing. We're getting fancy. Are you guys painting along or are you working on your own project? What are you guys working on today? Or are you just sitting and hanging out while we chat? <clears throat> if you want to please post what you're working on in the Facebook group we'd love to see it cheer you on ask for help if there's a project you're working on that we can help with and just to celebrate what you're working on Thought I heard thunder, but it's just a squirrel running on top of the roof. <laughs> that freaked me out. Watching and learning. Oh, I'm glad you're enjoying it, Cindy. That's good. <clears throat> Anybody have any questions? I have three more small magnet circles to do for various teachers as end of the year gifts. Yay! Trying to pick colors. Okay. Can we help at all? Is there any, anything we can do to help you pick colors? Um, one thing I use a lot for color selection, I go to Pinterest a lot because you can find, if you search color palettes on Pinterest, hoo -hoo -hoo, you can get all kinds of good inspiration on there. Uh, painted two small candles, nice. And your, lo your large project is vegetating. Sometimes you need to do that. Watching, learning, and enjoying. Oh, I'm glad. Christy, it makes me, you have no idea how much it, it fills my heart that you are enjoying this so much. I am so, so, so happy that you are just having some fun. Janice, watching you, I love listening to you reason out what to do. Oh, I'm so glad that that's helpful. I'm so glad that that's helpful. You know, I, I used to always think that I had to have it all figured out before I sat and talked, but that's just so not realistic. So I want to be able to talk this stuff through and say, okay, so this is my decision and this is why it didn't work out the way it did. And this is what I'm going to do to fix it and go through it. Because that's what's actually happening when we're sitting and doing this stuff, right? <clears throat> I think I've settled on various gold and bronze and silver tones for the music teacher. Oh, brilliant. I'm pouring the paints for that now. Nice. That'll be beautiful. That's perfect. That's perfect for a music teacher, right? All the instruments. Kavitha is crocheting and enjoying this melon. Oh, I'm so glad. And Cindy's working on her first canvas. I think it's coming along fine. Mostly all gold. Ooh, very nice. How do you like the Arteza paints? They're pretty good quality, aren't they? I'd really like to... I. There's a huge part of me that wants to switch to higher quality paints like the Arteza and the, the heavier bodied ones, but I feel like I'd be wasting so much paint if I made that switch, <laughs> but I'm, I'm dying to try them. Just dying to try them. And then there's those paints that you find on Etsy that are all animal colors. I can't remember the brand of them but I want to try those too. There's so many cool different paints out there, but at some point I'm like, I'll try them once I've used up some of my others maybe. I tried watercolor for the first time. I'll show you guys what I did. <clears throat> it's one of the few things that's still in here. 
So I, I started with watercolor. I still have to finish this here and go over this again, but you can kind of see the color shift in these in these paints. So I'm going to play around with that a little bit more too because it's super fun. It was really relaxing. Really, really, really relaxing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I totally will. Thanks, Cindy. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. I got the watercolors from... Um, who was it? DreamWorks? I think I'll have to pull it out. I'll have to pull out my Etsy order. Um, fantastic, fantastic stuff. And then there's also Rain City watercolor that I want to order from next. Now that I know that I like these, uh, they're based out of Vancouver, so I like to support the Canadian small businesses when I can. <clears throat> But they were awful fun. And I can totally see a new addiction starting eventually with all of that. <laughs> Got all kinds of different ideas of things because I'd like to get back to doing some drawing as well. And again, just making some bigger pieces. Maybe making some prints and stuff. I know I've talked about that before, but I haven't... I still have to figure out how to do it. <clears throat> Especially for the larger canvases like this, how to get a really good picture to be able to have it be print worthy, but we'll get there. <clears throat> yeah, they're really, really pretty. And then she sent me some, some sample colors too. So I used this one. So I used this one, this one, and this one. And then I used the green as the, the border one. And then she sent me these these ones are all the free samples that she sent me. They're really, really cool. So definitely going to be playing with those a lot over the next little while and doing some drawing and painting and stuff. Rex is working on a piece for Pride Month. If I don't screw it up, I'll submit it for the challenge. Yay! <clears throat> I will keep my fingers crossed for you. That's awesome. I can't wait to see. And I hope you're having fun with it. I had started doing some heart stones that were going to be all the pride colors. Um, and then I got distracted with a whole bunch of other stuff. So I never did do it. So I'll have to do them. I will do them at some point. The one that I did do, I'm really, really, really happy with. I'll show you. It's the the new pride flag, not the new pride flag, but the the proper pride flag, I guess. And I did that, and I thought that turned out really cool. So I got to figure out what I'm going to do on the sides to finish that off. But I definitely want to do more of these. You would love these paints. The paints from Michaels. They're called So Flat. Ooh. Ooh, totally going to have to have a look at that then. <clears throat> Thanks, Cindy. I've been dotting quite a bit, uh, doing quite a bit of practice with bottles. I'm not comfortable enough yet to create a full piece. That's cool. And you know what? These are the ones that you want to, yeah, just play with and practice with, right? And if you go into it knowing that it's practice, if one happens to turn out really, really well, you can always move forward with it, right? But if not, you... you kind of go into it assuming that it's just going to be practice it's just for fun just to learn and, and dabble with different techniques and stuff and get comfortable and it takes some of that pressure off right and a lot of the times that's when some really beautiful stuff is going to come out So always remember, though, on a really large piece like this, eventually you're going to want to go in. Once you're completely done with all of the detail and everything, you're going to want to go in with a tiny little brush and pick up any little splatters and everything like that. I do. I love flat paints. I really, really do. They're my favorite. I, I, and I, I don't even know why. 
I don't even know why I love the matte ones so much, but it's just something I'm super, super drawn to. I'm totally going to check those out. Thank you, Cindy. Going in to see mom and dad on Monday, so I might swing by Michael's and see if I can find anything interesting. I've been really slowed down on my content lately, you guys. Um, but uh, hold on to your hats because I'm going to be ramping up in a big way. Um, because I need to support myself. So it's about time that I start treating this like an actual business and actually sticking with some routines and stuff. <clears throat> you know, it's it's put up or shut up time for me with this whole art as a career thing. So um, I'm going to do my best to continue learning and see what is going to come next, but I'm excited for I'm, I'm excited for the prospect of growth and security. So that's where I'm going. Did I forget a couple dots? Oh, I did. Thank you. Thank you, Wilma. I'm going back. I found them. Thank you. I'm so glad you said that. There we go. Yay. Thanks, Wilma. Just sell online. Okay, I'll take a I'll definitely take a look online then. Thanks, Cindy. Here's a funny story. I had pain in my right index finger knuckle since Monday, and I asked Pat what I could do to help it. He has physio, physio and he said, stop painting. I was like, no, <laughs> that's not an option. <laughs> Working through the pain, it's either arthritis or a long time healing for me sleeping on it with a bent finger. Oh, yeah, both of those things could do it. Yeah, no, not painting is not an option. No way. No way. Good call. Hi, Sue. Thank you. Oh, that's a really good idea, Renee. Using cereal boxes, and if they're okay, use them as gift boxes. That's a great idea. Oh, cool. I'll totally have to check that out. Thanks, Cindy. That's awesome. I'm excited to stand this one up once we get all the way around. We're not even halfway around yet, so this is the time-consuming part. But it's so gratifying in the end. When I get to halfway, I'll show you. Because I find it's really cool to look from one half to another with the detail and without. <clears throat> We're getting close to halfway. All right. Oh, that's big and gloppy. It's weird doing this in silence. I'm either talking to you guys when I do this typically or I'm listening to music or YouTube or something. It's actually quite nice doing this really quietly. It's quite peaceful. Quite peaceful. All right, let's do this one. And now I'm going to tilt this up on its side. You can see that difference. All right, so you can see on this side, it's got the white dots. This side, it doesn't. Both of them look good, right? 
but it's just that little bit of fancy pants detail in there that I think really finishes it, right? But that's the nice thing. Go with what you like the look of, right? I left enough space specifically because I wanted to do these tiny dots in between because I love the look of it. But you don't have to, right? That's the beauty of it. And then we're gonna go in and add more top dots in here. So we're gonna get some white in here and in here that'll make it pop. That's why I usually say I'm gonna wait until I'm done the top dots before I decide what other detail to add in because the top dots will make it look like it's glowing, right? So it's going to give a whole different look to the piece and then help me determine what I wanna do for more detail and where is where are there spots that need more detail, right? Like are there are there spots that just aren't jumping out or that look too dark or are fading into the background, right? <clears throat> Thanks, Sue. Hi, Catherine. How are you? It's good to see you. We're making progress. We are making progress. Slowly but surely. But this is some of the fun stuff because this is the this is the detail and that can be some of the super fun, the super fun, super duper fun. And I'm just going to check on the time. Good. Oh, good. So we still got another half hour. Fantastic. Let's jump back in here then and keep going with this detail. try not to stick too much of my hand in front of the camera but we'll, we'll see how that actually works I loved putting in these little details this piece so far is probably I think this is part six Part six, two hours, plus I did about three hours on my own. So we're at about 15 hours so far. About 15 hours. Now, there's lots of things that play into that, right? Because I'm talking with you guys, it's as opposed to if I was just sitting and doing a piece like this on my own. I would be a lot farther along at 15 hours, but we stop and we chat and I answer questions and I get onto tangents and that, that always slows me down a little bit, not in a bad way in, in any way, shape or form, because I enjoy that part of all of this, but it is just, it just is what it is, right? It does impact the speed. But this would be, it probably wouldn't have cut out too, too much time. This would still be at least 10 hours, <clears throat> even if I was doing it just on my own without doing it live. Thanks, Brianna. How you doing? I knew you'd love the purple, Brianna. My friend Brianna, her favorite color is purple. She's got purple everything. A little too much paint, but that's okay. I'm wiping off the tool a lot because it's going to build up quickly. Enjoying a lazy day. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm doing good. Always feels better to be sitting and doing some painting. I haven't been doing a lot of painting this week, and I have missed it a lot. <clears throat> so I'm excited to get myself a little more settled 
so that I can really get back to painting. Today was a rough start, I'm not gonna lie, it was a rough start, but I am pleased with how I moved through it. And I'm very pleased to be sitting here with you guys, chilling and painting. Everything's okay though, Brianna, no need to worry. Just one of those mornings where there was a lot of, a lot of bullshit. <laughs> Let's just call it what it is. No nice way to put it and no more accurate way. I'm glad you're getting a lazy day. That's nice to hear. I like to hear that you're getting some rest. I'll have to get you up for a visit soon. Pull a hair out of there. Where's the live? Cindy, where's the live that Christine is doing with the with the flat paints? Do you know when it is? Glad you're enjoying your painting and company then. Yeah, I am. And it's amazing what a couple hours in your happy place can do for the rest of your day. So this is nice. And it's good that this was on my calendar, right? Because if it wasn't, I probably would have kept doing other things. And they need to get done, but this also needed to happen. And I'm really happy with how this piece is turning out. Still a ways to go. And look at me thinking I was going to be able to do this in three or four piece parts. <laughs> that was cute, wasn't it? <laughs> <clears throat> but that's okay. We're going to start getting into painting on different surfaces. I've got some wood panels. I've got more canvases. I've got some little trays. We're going to do some more resin soon. Um, I've got a bunch of little stuff to work on that I will definitely bring into these lives. I want to paint on some glass wine tumblers, so we'll do some of those. All kinds of fun stuff. And then, of course, once I start painting inside the camper, then that'll be a whole other side of things. Awesome. You guys got your answers. Okay, good. Almost done too, but another, about three quarters of the way done. So we're making good progress on this. And then we'll take a step back as per usual. And take a look at it once the whole row is done. Then we're going to go back into the center. And I'm going to see how that's coming along as far as drying make a little a couple little repairs and then that might be it for today we might be at another standstill until it dries a bit more but we'll give it a shot and see how it goes we'll give it a shot do you use multi-surface yes Yes, because the glass can go in the oven, um, I use the multi-surface. Um, I'm also looking at the idea of um, just setting up somewhere to let them just cure for the 21 days to air cure. Um, it's the logistics of where do you put something for that long, but I think I'm gonna have to do it. For, I'm gonna have to do it for the Christmas ornaments. Um, 
so I might as well start kind of prepping it and see what kind of space I can set up to do a lot of drying and see how that goes, right? We'll see. But yes, I will use the multi-surface um, to give it the best chance of adhering and being dishwasher safe after. Now, Mod Podge has a dishwasher safe sealant that you can use. Uh, and I like Mod Podge too because it's relatively inexpensive too compared to some of the artist varnish and everything that are out there. Um, I'm I've I'm thrilled with the Mod Podge matte varnish. It is delicious. And um they do have a dishwasher safe Mod Podge. I haven't tried it yet, mainly because um my lack of patience immediately kicks in when I read that you can't bake it to cure it. The Mod Podge has to sit for 21 days in order for it to air cure. So that's what's held me back so far. And yeah, multi-surface on the Christmas ornaments as well. Um, I did do some last year that did not have the multi-surface and I mean, they did fine, but I would be concerned about their longevity um, after being packed up and then brought out again. I think that using multi-surface will be a good um, a good practice just to be on the safe side. But like I said, I'm going to have to set up something to uh, be able to let them air cure for the 21 days, right? Um, I do think that that's well worth doing. Um, so it's just the logistics of it, right? Figuring out somewhere in your home that you can let a bunch of stuff like that sit out for three weeks without needing that space back for anything. So some strategy will come into play there. For all of us, I think. <clears throat> We're almost done. Almost done. Redo that doc because I didn't like that one. All right, folks. Let's see, let me put the lid on and let's see what we got. And actually, you know what? We're not gonna go back into the center. I'm gonna start working on that outer edge. So let me zoom out and there we go. Right, crazy the difference that just a bunch of little tiny white dots can make to really make it pop. So you can imagine then once again, once we go in and do more top dots, on these dots and the center dots for the petals and this and we'll do top dots on these accent dots as well that's really 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 gonna pop right it's gonna give a lot of dimension on a lot of depth so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually start working on this row here and uh, try and figure out what I'm gonna do for this one I think I might do swoops but I'm not completely sure yet so, hmm. Hmm. Jerry Lynn, I grabbed a bottle of the Hard Coat Mod Podge. I'm going to test it on a stone and see how waterproof it actually makes it. Oh, cool. Let us know. Thanks, guys. And I think once again, once more, the top dots and everything are done in here, it's really going to jump out and pop really nicely. <clears throat> I'm really happy with it so far. It still has a way to go. So let me talk you through what I still want to do with this piece. I'm just going to back it up a little bit here and tighten up my little arm that's holding my phone so that you can see it properly. So, all right. So what I want to do, so I want to, on these pedals here, Bring them out so that they're level with these petals somehow, whether it's doing swoops, what, whatever it is. And then do another row around the outside. That will then finish off the main mandala piece. Then it'll be a matter of doing all of that detail to see where that's going to work out. And then 
um, seeing if I want to do anything in the corners or not. Um, I'm on the fence. Oh my goodness, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, I'm on the fence on whether I want to do anything in there, but I think that's because I still really need to see a little bit more of the design come in um, and, and get finished first. but it's still very possible to do more. So for now, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? The idea that just popped into my head is to do so. <laughs> is to do a couple more rows here and then do swoops on top of it. But what I wanted to be able to do right is create this effect where I can alternate them, right? So that in between each one I have a design, but that might be the way to finish it off. Hmm. All right, I'm just going to keep going with the walking dots, and then when I run out of space for that, then I'll look at adding some swoops in there to finish them off, I think. I think that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Thanks, guys. Sorry, Cindy. I was too far away from the microphone. I'm sorry. I probably will do the corners, but I want to see how far out I build this first, right? With another row on the outside, I want to see how that looks and then figure out how to do the corners, but I probably will. All right, so what I'm going to do, so this was purple number one. I'm going to go to purple number two, and we're going to do um, some more walking dots. And we'll go from there. So that's where we're going to start. So I'm going to try and pick the hairs out of my little paint pot and clean her off. Did I get them? Oh, there's another one. Half the time is the hairs just move around and I'm just pulling paint out and wasting paint when I'm pulling them out of the jar. All right, so this should be good. All right, so let's see here. So I'm gonna start up in the tops here by putting those peak dots on in color number two, right there. So each subsequent peak dot, I want to be slightly larger than the one before it. And it's nice to see that I'm sticking with the guidelines for the most part. That feels good. Let me go here. I'm just putting these peak dots on and then I will switch to dotting in front of me to do the walking dots. I think this is gonna work out well. A little bit off with the guidelines, but that's okay. We can twist back in that way. There are so many possibilities on how to do things, you know. I really like the look, too, of adding more of these rows of, of the solid color dots, like the, the purple dots with the white in between, and having them fill out the edge. I really like that look as well. Um, so that's always a possibility to fill out right to the edge. Instead of doing corners and working inwards, but we'll see how it feels when it's done, when the main part of the design is done. There's lots of little paint splatters all over the place, so it's definitely, I always find it's really gratifying too to take it from um, finished but needing touch-ups 
to going through with the black paint and doing all those little touch-ups, getting rid of any little paint splatters, getting rid of any chalky spots where the black isn't super solid, just kind of really cleaning it up there. I always find that part incredibly gratifying too. All right, so that's the last one of those. So now I'm gonna move the camera back down towards me and I'm gonna do some of those walking dots. I'm in love with the center dot. It's a beautiful purple, eh? And it's funny because it's it's really, really dark. So it's one of those ones that as it dries, it almost blends into the background, but I'm gonna put lots of top dots on it so that it really adds some dimension there. All right, so let's go here. Let's start doing some walking dots. My goal will be in the next 10 minutes to finish this row of walking dots. And if I don't finish it in 10 minutes, that's okay. We'll just keep going until I get this row done. Oh, not enough paint on there. Oh, and that's a hair. Whoops. <clears throat> Now, the other thing too is my guidelines are a little bit thicker out here. So if it's in a spot where I haven't erased them very well, it could impact the size and shape of my dots. So I'm watching for that as well. Any misshapen dots that are crossing those guidelines. Yeah, and then some swoops with these. All right, I'm feeling more optimistic of how to keep working with these. The other option that you could do if you have a space like this, so the reason that this is happening, let's back up for a second, is that I had thought that these petals would actually end up being quite a lot bigger and then um, there was a ton of space left, but the space wasn't big enough for a full other petal. So the other thing that I try and stay aware of is that when I'm working from light to dark on these petals, eventually I'm going to get to dark dots again, and they're going to run into this potential, potentially run into this row of dark dots. So the option that you could do as well is you can always go from dark to light. So have one set of petals that goes from light to dark, and then in between them have them go from dark to light, and that will keep the contrast there. Okay. Tony's here, Brianna? What? What did I miss? Tony, if you're here, hi. I hope you're doing good. And the reason I never go in and do too many touch-ups, I'll do sometimes every once in a while, is because when I'm dotting my pattern over top, I might cover some of these paint splotches, right? So I try not to make more work for myself than needs to be. In those cases, I wait until I'm completely done in case my design is just naturally going to go over top some of, of these things that I want to correct with black paint after. So we have a new kitten in the house. Um, the person that is moving in here July 
first and who will be living in my old room um, has a cat just got a kitten and the kitten is here already and his name is Bucky from Marvel after Marvel the winter soldier and he is so stinking cute so playful. He's very talkative. I'm actually regretting now that I didn't go from from dark to light because that would actually fill in the space quite nicely because then you could have overlapping petals and not lose the distinction between the two. I'll have to try that on another one. Came up that Tony was watching, tried to call him. He's working today. He messaged me that he popped on to check it out. He always comments when I'm watching. Oh, that's so cool. That's so nice. Say hi to him for me. That's so sweet. So Brianna works at a car dealership that I used to work at. Um, and so I've gotten to know some of the team that she works with on a daily basis too. They're so kind. I don't get in there to visit. So it's cool when, when people pop on. I love when people pop onto the lives. I've got a couple friends that just pop on just to say hi. That's so nice when you guys do. It means the world. I feel very supported. The fact that you guys choose to spend so much time with me really makes my heart so happy. I'm so glad that you enjoy what I'm doing. All right, I'm going to ask you the same question that I ask you, that I've been asking every Saturday for the last couple of weeks. Do we continue on with this next Saturday and see it to fruition? Or does anybody, do we need a break to go on to a different project? I'm perfectly happy to keep going because I would like to see this one to the end, but I also understand that there are people who might be wanting to work on other projects and do other walkthroughs through other projects in these tutorials. So <clears throat> please let me know what you'd like me to do for next week. Um, I'm starting to get... Um, some stuff saved in my drafts as far as um, getting the schedule in the calendar more. I haven't been putting the mug painting parties on the schedule because they're not Facebook events. And to keep things simple, I want to make sure that I know exactly where I'm linking people to. Um, I'm looking at, I'm, I'm switching to Zoom for the mug painting parties because of the recording and sound issues that I've had. Um, up with Google Meet and doing a screen record. So I'm going to switch to Zoom. That will be effective this coming Friday for, um, no, sorry, this coming Wednesday for the black and gold mug painting party on Wednesday afternoon. Um, and I think I'm going to, instead of having it sell through my website, well, I've got to look and see, because I want to find some way that when you purchase a ticket, it'll automatically send you the Zoom link for that event by email so that I don't have to go in and manually send it to everybody who places an order on my website. So <clears throat> there's going to be a little few little things changing. I will do my absolute best to keep you posted as soon as that happens, okay? Even Alicia in our finance office, she saw one of your videos on TikTok and she screenshotted it, came to show me how many views you had. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I've got one that blew up, that's for sure. And that was, that was intense. I tend to shut down when things get really, when I start getting a lot of attention, it freaks me out and I shut down. Um, and I'm, I'm working on that. <laughs> I'm working on getting better at that. Okay, I will keep going then. So next week, let's put this up and take one final look at it for today.
Oops, I will zoom you out in a second here. So that's where we're at. So we're gonna keep going. Oh, you're tilted. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> Let's see if I can turn that a little bit better. So this is where we're at. Definitely room for another row after this row is done. Um, and we, and I think it's gonna be swoops, but it might be alternating swoops and petals. That might be a cool way to finish it off. Um, and then keep adding detail. So more top dots next week in the center and finishing the center dots of all of the petals. That's gonna be a huge one. Actually here, let's go through and add a top dot on these large ones on the outer edge really quickly before we're done, cause that won't take long. Um, I'm gonna go to number two and choose what size do I want to use? Is it five? Yeah, we're going to go for a five. So we're going to keep going with top dots. We're going to keep going with um, all of the detail. We'll keep going with the remainder of these two outer rows. We will talk about corners. We will talk about going in and doing touch-ups on any detail. <clears throat> but we will keep plugging away at it because it is getting so close to done. We are so, so close. And I'm really excited to see how it looks once it's completely done. I was looking at some of the other bigger pieces that I've done and it's funny how I look back and I don't remember how I did what I did. You know, I have one where I must have used 15 different colors and just a lot of different gradients of the same color and thinking back I I didn't use the little paint pots then so I didn't pre-mix all these colors I was mixing a lot on the fly or just going what color do I want to use now and jumping in with it um, and I want to try and do that again I want to try and jump in and have no plan jump in and just say I don't know what I'm going to do I don't know what other colors I'm going to add to it I don't know what the plan is but just completely, <clears throat> you know, we've talked about designing the actual pattern on the fly, but going at it with color completely on the fly, I think would be really interesting. And I'd really like, the other thing I really, really want to do is I want to do a large one like this in rainbow really, really badly, because I think that would be super, super cool. So... Lots and lots of ideas going around in my head. And then it's just a matter of how to get them all implemented. I have to repaint the mugs that got ruined last night with the rain. Um, even the mug from the mug painting party, the, the last black and white mug painting party, I had added some more top dots on it and where it sat, it got covered in water and it all slid off the mug because it just sat there and soaked in this layer of water that was on it. So I've I wiped clean three or four different mugs today. Ah, it was ugh, it was just awful. Anyways, we're moving past it. Moving past it. Trying not to dwell. Not doing a good job sometimes, but trying not to. So there we go. So a couple more top dots on there. I'm glad you guys are loving it. This is great. Thank you guys. Still looks like a Mayan calendar. Awesome. I love that. I love that. Thank you, guys. I love doing rainbows too, Jerry Lynn, and I find that you can have so much fun with the top dots with them too, right? Like you can go for the 3D looking one. You can you can pick different colors to, to alternate on them. There's just something about them that just makes me so happy to look at them all the time. So I, I definitely want to do more of those. Um, I'm going to be starting Christmas ornaments soon. I'm going to be... Continuing on with mugs, um, I don't have too, too many mugs left over, so I'm going to have to be very careful to make sure that I've got lots in stock for, for doing the mug parties. And I really want to get back to doing more paw print stuff. So doing um, some of the tiny stones, like I'm thinking I'd really like to do a bunch of stones this size, oops, this size, these little guys with the little paw prints in the middle. So there's lots of things that I wanna get back to and start my little assembly lines. But for the next couple of days, I'm gonna be, um, I'm really just gonna be 
trying to get settled and get all of my art stuff out to the camper and getting myself a system so that when I have to come in here and do my lives that I can do that and working on trying to get internet out there because that will be the total game changer. Totally, Brianna. And, and that's what I've been trying to remind myself, you know, with the with the stuff that was that was there this morning to deal with. It was kind of like, OK, I can't do anything about it. I can't stop it. I can try and look and make sure it doesn't happen again. I can try and take care of things so that it doesn't happen again. And I'm learning, right? It's all about learning right now. And I was pleased with myself for not completely. Oh, yeah, I've got the ladybug cut out, too. I was pleased with myself for not completely losing my mind. Yeah, I've got the ladybug. I've got boxes. I've got birdhouses. I've got the VW bus to paint. There are so many cool things that are going to be coming down the pipes. I still have to finish the hurricane vase before I run out of that paint color. So there's so many things on deck, and it's going to be a lot of fun to start kind of going through some of these things. So um, I've got a teapot to paint. I've got a globe to paint. I've got a ton of planters to paint. So... Definitely not going to run out of stuff to do anytime soon. And I really want to challenge myself with color and more canvases and everything like that. So um, as long as you guys want to keep coming and hanging out with me and painting, painting with me, I'm going to keep doing this. And I'm so grateful for you guys choosing to spend so much time with me. Um, any of these um, tutorial recordings are available uh, through my Patreon. Eventually, all of the tutorials for this large piece will be put together and will be available on my website as well. Um, and mug painting parties are listed on my website under the accessories section. So there's a couple more upcoming ones. I'm going to be booking out more of them soon, getting more of them on the calendar. And especially once I get Wi-Fi out in uh, the camper, then I'm really going to be able to open it wide up and do a lot more stuff and a lot more live streaming. That's what I'm going to start on Twitch. There's all going to be all kinds of good stuff. So, so stay tuned. I think that July is going to be a month of tying up loose ends and some trial and error and just hopefully a whole lot of fun. So I will look forward to seeing you guys again next Saturday. Um, I'm hoping to do some more lives next week as well. Um, I'm hoping to. It's all going to depend on what's going on with the schedule and um, what's going on with the Wi-Fi and everything. But I'm going to do my absolute best to get back to doing a couple of lives on TikTok as well during the week. So that's kind of where we're at right now. If you guys have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to let me know. And again, thank you so much for choosing to spend so much time with me today. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And I'm sending you guys lots of love and light. And just know that I, I always feel the love that you guys send back to me. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll talk to you again really, really soon. Lots of love. Bye-bye.